Welcome to the GCN Tech Show from our tech trip to Italy on the slopes of the Monte Grappa. Yeah, it's beautiful. We've got loads coming up this week, including the new Orbea Ordu TT bike, the new Canyon Air Road, new super light inner tubes. I'm, I'm excited about those. I bet. Loads more, plus your upgrades, the bike roll, and our main talking point. Are the UCI rules about to change? Yes. Let's find out. Our bike's going to get wacky. Now, as mentioned, we are in Italy on our tech field trip and we're filming some cool content that we hope you guys enjoy. So stay tuned for that. It'll be making its way onto the channel soon. Right, let's start with a poll we asked you last week and that was, should bike brands forget about the UCI rules when designing bikes? And 63% of you said they should. Well, this got us thinking. And then our friends over at Cycling Tips posted a really interesting article about a leaked report from the UCI, which suggests that they could very well be about to completely ditch and change some of the pesky rules that have limited bike design over the last few years. <sighs> but before we discuss this topic further, Manon, I have a suggestion. How about we uh, retire to our the, our warm and peaceful hotel to carry on this topic. Cause that is actually a really good idea, Ollie, because it is, it's actually really cold. Even though it's very beautiful, <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> so, also, great idea. We've been filming at Cellar Italia all day and it's, it's getting quite dark now, so uh, come on. Oh, wait for me. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look like a hotel. Well, it's not. Yeah. We got to our hotel last night and it was dark and there was nowhere good to film. So we decided to just go get some pizza instead. And, and gelato. Yeah. And then we got up and we've come to Castelli's factory, which is in an amazing location. It's very cool. In the mountains near the Monte Grappa. Oh, it's incredible. We've got an amazing video that's going to uh, be coming out soon. Stay tuned for that. But let's get back onto our main talking point. And it looks like the UCI is going to significantly relax its rules on frame design. And this has potentially huge implications uh, for the bikes that we ride because the rules in their current form have had a big impact in limiting engineers in the innovation that they can do on bikes. So nothing on the weight of the bikes? That's staying, I'm guessing. The weight is, is still going to stay the same, I think. Well, many of us do love to criticise the UCI, myself and Ollie included. They are the fun place, really. Yeah. I can understand it is quite hard <laughs> what they do. Yeah, I mean, they are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's, on the one hand, they, ha they have to sort of balance innovation and the commercialization of the sport. That's important to bring money yeah. in. But they still have to preserve the aesthetic of the bike and the sport. Mm. And the UCI is the main reason everybody at your local sportif isn't riding around like this. Or this. Oh, I can't see that. No one needs Oof. to see that. Well, anyway, while these rules may have uh, done some good, uh, they have arguably limited the scope for innovation within the sport and limited bike design, but this could all be about to change. What does it mean? What rules are actually going to change? Well, according to the leaked report, we understand that it uh, actually pertains to road, track, time trial and cyclocross bikes, and the regulations that could be relaxed are to do with tube shapes and their dimensions, and possibly also seat tube rules as well. Mm. But not weight. Not weight. Yeah. Well, everybody wanted the weight one. We've been waiting for this rule to change for, for a long time. That's not changing mm. anytime soon, I don't think. Sorry. For a long time, there have been strict rules to the thickness of tubing. Currently, it has to be between 2.5 centimetres and 8 centimetres thickness in any direction. And then the seat stays, fork stays, and chain stays have to be at least one centimetre. Yeah, but. I mean, these could be about to change. According to the leaked document, we're potentially looking at the uh, minimum thickness of the tubes being reduced to just one centimetre. So that could be your down tube, that could just be one centimetre, or your head tubes, one centimetre wide. And the thickness of the, the stays and, and the fork blades, that one centimetre could just go all together. Yeah. So you could, I don't know, have like a, a five millimetre thick fork blade. Well, you're going to be quite excited about this because there's a lot of aero advantages to this. Oh, golly gosh, I am, Manon. <laughs> golly gosh. I mean, this is like huge aero potential because, you know, the biggest thing in aero is arguably reducing frontal area. When you talk aero? Aero, but if you can, like, <laughs> both. We can have both. <laughs> but if you, if you make the bike much thinner, 
you know, yeah. you're massively reducing that frontal area, which is really exciting. But this doesn't just have applications for aero. It isn't just about aero, because potentially by making parts of the bike really thin, you can make them more flexible as well in certain areas. So it has huge potential in terms of building compliance into parts of bikes where you want, say, like a it to flex like in a you know, a, a bike for gravel or a bike for, you know, off-road, a cross bike yeah. or um, a Paris-Roubaix bike or something. But surely by making them thinner, that would reduce the weight? Well... I, I, I'm not going to shut up about this weight thing, but... Yeah, well, maybe you could, but, yeah. you know, you're still going to want to retain the same strength and they still have to make... So I think the fact that they're... By making them thinner, they're still going to be as, as strong. So it might still... They're probably it's going to be the same weight, yeah. I'd imagine, or a similar weight because they're going to have to you know, maintain, that, stronger, maintain yeah. that strong shape um, by still having the same amount of material used in a different way. But Ollie, does this mean we're all going to be riding around on bikes like this? No, oh. thankfully not. There are still plenty of pesky rules in place to make sure that bikes still look like bikes and we're not going to be riding like bean bikes anytime soon. Good. The, uh, the rules still say that you have to have a double diamond style frame with a top tube and a down tube. Good. Yeah. Glad that's the case. But there are other rules to do with the seat post that could change things as what well. What are they? Well, uh, cycling tips has, has pointed this out that the seat tube doesn't necessarily have to be conti a continuation of the seat post. So you could have the seat post entering the frame at a different location on the top tube. So an example of this, um, the cycling tips points out, is the BMC uh, time machine tri-focused TT bike. If you look at that bike, you'll see that the seat post does actually sort of slot in uh, onto the top tube in a different location. And this could have like aerodynamic benefits uh, in terms of bike design and also make it easier to tweak, you know, geometry. And it just, again, it's something that allows greater freedom and can lead to advantages um, aerodynamically and also to do with comfort and things like that as well. Um, which is pretty interesting. It is. We could see these rules in place at the start of 2021, so keep your eyes peeled for some snazzy new bikes. I'm very excited to see what these are going to turn out like. No one's said the word snazzy since 1993. That was, snazzy. That was my Auntie Janet. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, let us know what you think. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Just because they're going to be aero. Yes, but let's have a poll. Um, you know, do you think this is a good thing for the sport? Seeing exciting new, potentially more aerodynamic bikes that are really thin, and you know, pushing the innovation of what we can what we can make. Do you think it's going to be good for the sport of cycling, or do you think we're going to further move away from the traditional look and aesthetic of cycling? Um, good or bad? Click on the screen. You can vote in the poll. Now. Right, we've got to go and have a look around the Castelli factory, Ollie. So back to you in the studio. Yeah, the hot tech. Okay, thanks for that, Manon and Ollie. It's great to see you're in Italy. I'm not jealous at all. No, not the slightest. But seeing as you have left me to take on the rest of the tech show, well, I'm in charge, aren't I? I've got the bell, so going to be some uh, serious punishment coming up. But anyway, we'll move on to hot tech first. And if you are concerned about getting your bike as light as possible, have you looked as far down as inner tubes? My coach is actually very, very conscious about inner tubes. You could have a massive debate with him about it. But anyway, that's beside the point. Schwalbe have released a new inner tube, which is made from plastic and is apparently lighter, improves ride quality and has better puncture protection. The 23 to 28 mil inner tube weighs 41 grams. It's called the Aerothan. And as the name suggests, it seems like it will be aerodynamic, but, well, <laughs> it's not. But as I said, it is made from plastic and it's recyclable, so it's better for the environment. It's saving the planet, and I think that is the main point. More hot tech, though, this week. And as you may have seen, Canyon have released the latest version of their Aero, which has been in development since 2016. If you want a big in-depth look at the new Aero, well, GCN actually did a live launch of the bike and you can find it on GCN channel on YouTube. So do check that out and check out all the details because it is a rather amazing bike. But onto a new bike release this week and Orbea have actually released a new TT bike, the Ordu. 
Now, there's a reduction of 11.5% in drag compared to the previous model, which is a whopping amount, really, isn't it? It includes an integrated fork and stem, which looks neat and really aero as well. It's done an amazing job. And it's actually optimized to use 25 to 28 mil wide tires. So you can use those chunkier tires and not worry about any reductions in aerodynamics. There's also built-in storage and rather aero storage at that. So plenty of space for any bars or little snacks you want to take with you. So I actually did get to ride one last week and well, he did have a race with myself and Hank. I don't really want to talk about it too much because then um, yeah, it still kind of hurts mentally a little bit. He did, <clears throat> he did win. Um, but if you want to see the video and how we got on, check out the video. Yeah. Now, classic bike owners can now run the bar and stem combo that they want because Fork Mods have launched a new product. The Inicycle 1 inch to 1 and 1 8 inch threadless headset conversion allows you to run a modern stem or bar on a vintage frame. So if you do have a vintage bike, well, you can start customizing it to your heart's content. Okay, and finally on Hot Tech this week, what about dungarees? Have you ever seen dungarees on a bike? I'm not sure I have, but Cafe de Cycliste have designed a latest kind of kit line and it includes dungarees for women. And I think they look absolutely amazing, to be honest. They can be worn on the outside of a jersey or on the inside. They feature a cargo pocket on the back and the rear, and it just looks like something a bit different, really. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Would you wear dungarees out on the bike? Cha-ching! Okay, right now it's time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you guys submit your uploads to the GCN app, you know, bike related, equipment related, and you have the chance of winning the ultimate prize here at GCN, the cap. Now, <laughs> I would show you the cap you'd win, but Ollie's taking it to Italy with him, so you have to ask him for that one, but you will win a cap if you do win the poll. So let's check out the results from last week and see who's got the all important cap. Right, so it was a close battle actually, and I thought this would be a runaway victory, but it's a close one. So it was between a Super 6 Stealth build by Iceman and also the Imonda Lookalike Kids Bike from Carl Muck 79s And it's the kids bike that's taken it, so congratulations. With 59% of the vote compared to 41%. So yeah, I guess they did get it easily, but it was close, it was close, and oh, gotta love a kids bike, haven't you? So, Carl MCC 79s, caps on its way too. Enjoy. Right, on to this week now, and we have two great uploads to debate the winner off. So, first up, JPRIZ1106. Got a great deal on a bike last year. Had a warranty issue, hence the frame has changed from red to black, and has been upgrading bits over time with budget in mind, new wheels, aero bars, better rotor seat, and a gold chain. Oh, he's appealing to Ollie here, but Ollie isn't here, so. But it is a great upgrade, if I'm honest. I like, actually, the fact that it's gone to all black. I just think all black bike looks amazing, especially with a gold chain. I know I said Ollie's not here, but I, I like a gold chain as well. And I think and if any photo of a bike, when it goes from shallow to deep wheels, fantastic. It's a brilliant, brilliant upgrade. Yeah, that's going to be a serious contender. And it will be going up against Adam Palmer 91 a few upgrades over the years to improve the tarmac. So both upgrades are kind of like modern bikes, which have kind of been slightly changed and improved a bit. And I gotta say, this Tarmac SL4, nice looking bike, nice looking bike. I like the fact that there's orange kind of cable uh, outers. I think they're, they're brilliant. Valves look like they're lined up too, so I can't really complain about that. And I also like the little detail on the bottle cage with the orange, orange bits there too. Another kind of black, general look of the bike. It is missing that gold chain though. So will that be the clincher when they go up against each other? We'll see, we'll see. But you better get voting on the GCN app. Let us know which one should get the cap. So, be an interesting battle, I think. On to my favorite part of the show, actually, the bike fault. And as I said earlier, I've been left in charge of it. So it's Connor's rules today. No, no one else to tell me what to do, so. Gonna be a harsh judge, I think, harsh judge. Anyway, the bike vault, if you're not familiar with it, you submit your photo of your bike and we judge if it's a nice or a super nice. If it's a super nice, well, I get to ring that bell, so we'll see. It has to be very, very nice though, to get the bell wrong, so. Anyway, first upload, and this is from Andre C, and this is 
a BMC Time Machine TMR01. Wow. Okay, right, this is, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good, but, okay, those cranks, what I mean, it's like at 3.30, it's not three o'clock. So the rule is you've got to have the, those cranks level and yeah, it's just a bit out. I mean, if it wasn't for that, this would, this would have been up there, but I'm, I'm just noticed another discrepancy. The valve on the front wheel, past six o'clock, I mean, we explain it every week, don't we, really? So, yeah, nice, nice, but come back again, come back again. We'll see. Anyway, see if uh, Philip Pierce can do any better with a Ridley X Knight frame and forks. And I'll tell you what, well, look at this. That's a, that's a absolutely amazing bike, isn't it? Beautiful. I love the green on the, on the frame, and um, especially I love the purple on the stem and the cranks. Tan tire walls. And, okay, right, so we love to have the valves lined up and the decals all in the right place. On those Hope wheels, well, they're, they're looking brilliant. It's like all kind of almost symmetrical. It's, it's, it's on the right track, but when you look at the rear cassette, look at it. I mean, look at it. The chain's in the middle of the, it's in the middle. What? You know the rules. You know the rules. <sighs> so nice. It's not, it can't be, it can't be getting super nice. It's when the chain's in the middle of the cassette. I mean, what, I'd be letting in any old riffraff then. <sighs> moving on, moving on. Hans C88, will you finally, you know, make me happy today? Come on. Right, so, okay, well, this is nice now. This is a Cannondale CAD 2. Uh, this is a brilliant, brilliant bike. Look at that. Is that what the wheels on it? From 97. Okay, they're spinergies. Oh. <laughs> Spinergies, Spinergies on the bike. <laughs> wow, that's nice. That's really, really nice. Okay, and there's, I, I did say I'm in charge of the bike vault this week and you haven't got your cranks lined up, okay? Which I know I saw in a lot of previous uploads I was very critical of, but seeing as I'm the only one here and the fact you have Spinergy wheels on the frame, on the bike, Ollie's not here, is he? Super nice. Spinergies outweigh the cranks, so you got there. So congratulations. Congratulations. I mean, don't tell Ollie that about the cranks and I'm sure it will be it'll be kept as a super nice. It won't be uh, it won't be toppled. So yeah, nice one. Brilliant, brilliant looking bike. Love it. Next up we have Clark One and another Cannondale, Super 6 Evo. And well, cracking. Another cracking, cracking bike. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Where is that? Looks like it's, um, I'm gonna hazard a guess at somewhere near Girona, but I could be wrong. Um, brilliant, brilliant. I mean, I'm gonna have to be a bit critical here. I think the, the photo generally, I know it said it's a beautiful shot, but it's quite far back, you know, from the bike and I can't, I can't really judge it because of this. You know, like it's like, it's like judging a diving competition in the dark. You know it's a good dive, you've heard the splash, you're thinking it's a 10 out of 10, but you're blindfolded. So for that reason, it's just a nice. But yeah, it looks like you're enjoying riding anyway in a beautiful setting. So come back when you kind of get a bit closer to your bike with the, fo with the photo. And lastly, we have this classic Tour de France or Bayer in Uscatel colors. Um, this is from Unaremos. Uh, there's Mavic wheels, did a zero cockpit, Vittoria tires and an Evo saddle, 2004 model. <sighs> Brings back memories, doesn't it? V-Band Mayo flying up the climbs in the Tour de France with his jersey unzipped. I think I used to pretend I was doing that when I was a kid. Don't tell, don't tell Ollie I said that. I'm just waffling on the, uh, <laughs> the bike vault here, but it's another cracking bike. One by on the front, so it's kind of customized a little bit. Um, what are the valves doing on the top of the wheel? Why are, they in, why are they at 12 o'clock? What's the reason? It's six o'clock. As I said earlier, we the rules are there for a reason. I know I broke them, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, cracking frame, cracking bike. Um, I can't, you know, I can't let two discrepancies through in this show. So for that reason, it's just a nice, I'm sorry, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant bike. And um, as you can tell, brilliant team as well. 
And that is it from the bike vault. We had one super nice, which uh, I broke the rules for a little bit. But anyway, we won't tell Ollie that, will we? While he's enjoying his cappuccinos in Italy. Okay, thank you for watching the GCN Tech Show this week. It's been great to be on the show and great to be in charge. All the little bits that Ollie is normally a bit pernickety about. And yeah, I was in charge of the cowbell. Ollie calls it something different, doesn't he? Or I don't know what he calls it, but I'm calling it a cowbell because it's Connor's rules today, because I was, you know, taking charge. But anyway, Ollie and Manon, I hope you enjoy your trip in Italy and please bring me back a present. I do like a bit of Italian cappuccinos. So if you have any coffee beans, any cafes you're there, you know, think of me. You know? Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. It's been great to be on the show. See you all next week.